Hey guys, we are back. This is Andy McCann, owner of CrossFit Garage, and again, still trying to work on an actual podcast name, but I, I like the it's Farm Fitness Finances, Building a Strong Foundation for Life, so we're going to go with that for now, and I am here with Coach Laura, who did not start out as a coach, and she's going to talk about her journey, and she has a specific focus into nutrition and has a great journey there, so for everyone out there who thinks, man, trying to get my nutrition under wraps is, is tough, I mean, the answer is, it is, yeah. but... You can, you just have to be diligent. Yes. Yeah. All okay, right. So let's start with this. How did you end up uh, choosing CrossFit? You're like, all these things out there in the world that you could do. How did you say, I'm into CrossFit? That sounds like an interesting thing. We'll start with that, and then we're going to get into who are you. Um, well, I had a friend from college okay. who had done CrossFit for a little while and talked about it a lot. And then... Uh, were they like a crazy friend? Or you're like, oh, and that friend's stable and I totally like their advice. Second. Okay. Ladder. I love it. Those are some fun friends, uh, right? Well. Yeah. But, and then um, I had kind of, <coughs> once my daughter was maybe like a year old, I kind of just woke up like, I have to do something else. Yes. Because what, what were you doing? So something else. overweight. What were you doing? Nothing. Oh, well then. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> actually, Zero. that's a very fascinating point. So I, <clears throat> I get, after 15 years of this, and you've probably heard this too, I am not fit enough to start CrossFit. Oh, no. no. I'm like, that's, that's the weirdest thing. But people feel that way. Yeah. And you literally can start from I'm absolutely nothing. And yeah. weirdly, it is a hack to getting fit faster yes. with less time. You don't have to be in any shape whatsoever. You mm -hmm. just have to show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, sorry. So I segued there. So you were doing nothing. And you're like, I was doing nothing. And um, it was like January 2016. Oh, wow. And I decided I had to do something because she was walk, starting to walk. And I was like, I'm not, I cannot keep up with her. I was 200, and, I don't know, 30 something pounds. Oh, yeah? I was a circle. Yes. So I started walking and just paying attention to when I ate. And yeah. Between January and July, I lost like 30 pounds. But I was not going to get anywhere else, yes. right? Like that was not going to cut it. For so what my happens goals. there? So why does that happen? So you do something. You're like, I made it. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I plateau. I'm stuck or whatever. Mm -hmm. what, what's occurring there? Um, I just knew that I wasn't going to lose it or get to my goals just doing that alone. I needed to do something else. Mm -hmm. um, and the f I looked around a lot of things, and I had spent years and years paying for Globo Gym membership and just never going. I'd actually spent a lot of money on personal training at Globo Gym and never got anywhere with that. Oh, really? Fascinating. Um, just nothing ever really worked, and I felt like I needed a reason to go, right? Like, a if you go to line. a Globo Gym, you're yeah. just, like, in a sea of people. You don't know what you're doing. You don't have, like, a plan. Like, I wanted someone to tell me what to do. Right. Um, so that's without actually, paying like for personal, personal training. training. Yeah. yeah. So that's a very good point. So <clears throat> one thing that I have found is if you are either like, hey, I don't want to make it up on my own. I don't know what I'm doing. I right. need to be led. Or like me, I'm just too antsy and I will always program my favorite stuff. And right. then I'm in the routine <laughs> of I'm just doing the junk I'm really good at yeah. and I never work on my weaknesses. So weirdly, CrossFit, the, 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 the gym, the coach or whatever – comes up with the program, yeah. and then we tweak it to you if you need it to be tweaked, but you just, you literally, your job is to just show up. Just show up. Yeah. Yeah. So fascinating. So you said you, you, you were on about a six-month journey. Mm -hmm. um, were you logging your uh, meals and stuff, or were you just sort uh, of tracking it in your head and sort of... I don't think I... No, I was not. I was just paying attention okay. to what I ate. It wasn't even like a plan. It was just like, stop eating so much junk, stop right. eating out so much, stop you know, just did you come up I with any? Did you come up with any stuff. like uh, guiding principles to like keep you on the right? Not track? at that point. Okay. Um, and then my friend had talked a bunch about CrossFit, and um, I thought it was a little crazy. But then you had Groupon, so I was like, okay, I'll well, give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. And I so remember it's funny. <laughs> you're like the fifth person to say I started there. So way way back when, I would actually just tell people if they found us. I'm the type of guy who I'm like. If you show up and we have a deal, I'm just going to give it to you. I'm, yeah. Like even if you didn't know about it, because I just my character is yeah. I can't start a friendship off of trust and respect where I just totally disrespected. So anyone <laughs> that walked in, I'm like, here's a group on we were doing it. Yeah. Um, so there's five of you that I think I've interviewed back to back to back that <clears throat> maybe won't come out like that, but you all are still here and several of you are coaches. <laughs> and I'm like, it doesn't the group on doesn't work, but. It does when you look at it very specific, but there was probably like 100 people a month 
coming uh-huh. through it's on Groupon. It's a volume game, it is. right? And but so it's not of the hundred, always, yeah. there was five of the, let's say, we, well, we did it for like three, two, two or three years or something. Yeah. So that's like like 2,000 people that probably came through, and I have five people that are still here. So the yeah. percentages are really low. It just so happens that CrossFit did really stick for you. So, okay, so you found it. You're like, I'm into this. You come in the first day, and what is it like you for you? You were here. Oh, yeah? Was I, uh, hopefully I was a good coach. You were here. Um, was I not even, I probably wasn't even coaching. Uh, no, Devin was coaching, okay. but you oh, were yeah, Devin, there yeah, yeah, with me. I think there were like two other girls starting at the same time. That was when we did new member at like 8 p.m. Okay, yeah, so that was the problem with the Groupon is they would come yeah. into every class, and I was like, yeah. I can't, and we didn't have an on-ramp, mm-hmm. so it was like, just jump in, and hopefully it works. Bad on us. But also, it detracted from members. So yeah. members like, look, I pay you full price. And you're not even coaching me. I'm like, I know, but I've got like 10 new people who are about to hurt themselves. So <laughs> yeah. we decided, yeah. hey, let's do an 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. class just for them. Yeah. And that sort of worked. But, eh. but well, okay, so you show I, up. Yeah, so I came. Yeah, and I remember you, like, we were doing box jumps. And you were like, you just jump in the box. And I remember thinking, <laughs> what the hell? You want to do what? I was like, that's not happening. But... Um, the box is a weird one too because you go like you put like one plate I can jump it two plates yeah. I can jump that the third plate you're like I can't I don't know what happened <laughs> right so there's something that like yeah. your brain's like don't do it don't do it it just it's a block yeah. it's so weird well and you don't know <laughs> what you're capable of oh, until no. you try it yeah. it took me like 10 months to do a box jump and yeah. I was fine so let me back up real quick before you get into this uh, this first class you said that one day you woke up and you're like my kid is one mm-hmm. and there was so I tell people all, like my buddy Cam uh, uh, we've been friends since we were like 14 and I've been talking CrossFit for years and he just would never do it. He tried it once and threw up and he's like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> I'm like, you have to have a good sticky why. So his became his mom and I, I want to do better for my kids. Mm-hmm. So what do I do? I'm like, yeah, just go to CrossFit. But he wouldn't do it until, until he found the why. So what, what ends up being your why? You're, you're sitting there with your daughter, you're looking at her and you're like, oh man. And you probably over time have developed a why. So what is it? Why are you doing what you do? Because um, you look great and you've come a long way. Yeah. And I sometimes forget where you were unless I pop, pick, pop, 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 get my words. <laughs> unless Facebook pops up a picture of us years ago. Oh, yeah. I'm like, huh, yeah. look at that. Yeah. Uh, so what, it, what became your why? And if you need great financial advice, Aaron yes, Vincent Aaron. owns a company weirdly called Vincent Financial. <laughs> it's his name and it's what he does. It's my favorite type of business name. And he gives great advice. They're, they're moral. They're friendly. And he likes sawdust never and fertilizer. Same, never at the same time. Never at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what was your sticky why? Um, I think more than anything, I just wanted, like, I didn't, I wasn't going to be able to keep up with her, and yeah. I wanted to be healthy yeah. for her and not, and set a good example. But I don't know, like. So, okay, this is fascinating. So I love this right here. I want to set a good example. Kids do pay attention. Oh, yeah. Why do kids do what they do? Probably because you just did it. Right. So I, I have four older kids, and I look at them, and I'm like, you are such a jerk. Oh, that's me. <laughs> You're just doing me. Oh, I am the jerk. Yeah. So funny, the good example, you said uh, while we were in there, so. Laura and I just got done working out. So you're going to hear us <laughs> coughing and wheezing because literally it was like five minutes ago. <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're warming up. She's like, hey, mini me. And that's her, your daughter. What's your daughter's name again? Adeline. Adeline, I knew that. I'm just too old, so I don't remember anything. So <laughs> Adeline says, mom, I want to do some working out too. She's like, let's do some burpees. So you give her some weights and she's doing burpees. And you're, she crushes 30 burpees in right. two seconds. And I've done 10. <laughs> yeah, but, but she sees you role modeling this mm-hmm. and she's like, I'm into it. Yeah. I mean, that's... Pretty dang awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I didn't have that. Yeah. Not that my parents were unhealthy, but like that just, I never saw them working out. And I think they didn't do subconsciously, side bins and probably like, no, it probably just contributed to me not wanting to yeah. like forever. Right. Um, and well, I was like, just, I don't know, like, and I, I do feel like, like you talked about your friend not wanting to do it. I do feel like you have to go to a point where you want it. Yes. You want it bad, and I don't. I don't know if I could pinpoint exactly why I wanted it, but it was probably mostly motivated by her. Yeah. Um, and those are great. I had never wanted it before. I could. I mean, yes, you want it, but like I didn't want to do anything That's about right. it. So I, yes to that, and I'm sure you've said this. So Laura is also our nutrition coach, so we're going to get into some of that. <clears> but <throat> I have said it, or I've heard it, and then reset it. <clears throat> Everything is hard. Yeah. You just have to choose oh, yeah. your hard. Yeah. Being lazy, it, it's. 
the, the effort of, of lazy isn't hard, but the results of being lazy yes. is hard, oh, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Being fit is hard. You are here every day working out, doing stuff. Now, I, I believe CrossFit is a great little hack. You can mm-hmm. do a lot in 10 minutes. Like yeah. We just worked out for 13 minutes, and I'm like, I am taxed, right? <laughs> and at 50, someone challenged me to climb the rope again with no legs, and I'm like, uh, I probably shouldn't, but hold my beer. I'm in. <laughs> And so we can do things that we couldn't do before, right? And I've said it before, like you on pull-ups. I need to video your pull-ups. You have some of the most uh, graceful kipping, swinging kipping pull-ups, right? Now I know some people. feel like it. <laughs> if you look at it, so I diagnosed the, the, the pull-up in there is a swing and then there's a kip. Very few people do a swinging kipping pull-up correctly, putting them together. You do. Okay. And you're so consistent, you're inside of a consistent. No, you're not. You're very consistent. <laughs> and your chin's always up, your arm's always extended, and, and it's the same motion. I'm like, it's repeatable. You know, I do like, you do like, I don't like three, four, five, and then you're yeah. down. You shake it out, you're back up. Like, and methodical. I love it. But it's that time to attention and practice. How did you get that? You worked on it. Yeah. And so you have to choose your hard. This is, it's easy. You just show up. But it's hard because your yeah. kid wants to, I mean, your kid just went through soccer tryouts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Yes. Super stressful. But she probably knows mom wants to do something. She puts her heart into it. If I want to do this, mm-hmm. I need to put my heart into it. Well, and I don't think, like, once you kind of figure out what works for you, you know, CrossFit works for me, CrossFit works for a lot of people, um, you don't, like, you get into that routine and then you realize, like, if I don't do this, it'll make it harder. Yes. Because when you feel good, then you're able to do more things. And That's like, right. I don't think I could have accomplished as much as I accomplish on a daily basis as a single parent if I didn't do CrossFit. Okay. Like, I would be t- miserably tired, like, right. more tired. Yeah, no, and then a testament to you girls that were ladies. I mean, I'm 50. <laughs> All of you guys look like you're 25. I know you're like, oh, thank good. you. I know, but like, especially Danny, she's like 18. I don't know. But everybody looks so young to me, so I know you're not 25. But you guys have so much energy and enthusiasm and smiles like you know our mm-hmm. my stupid motto and that's, I like it it's fun fitness for coaching the first mm-hmm. is fun you guys bring fun mm-hmm. and I don't notice anything different and so <clears throat> it's funny to me when someone comes up and says uh, like one of the other coaches says oh you know Jamie's having a hard time or Laura's having a hard time I'm like wow I would never yeah. have noticed now I'm an introvert engineer who doesn't understand emotions <laughs> and a male so that probably messes it all up but it is fascinating the level of energy you guys have I think for sure it has a lot to do with coming here. Yeah. Like, it just gives you... I mean, I talked about this recently in the nutrition um, challenge videos about how movement can change your um, physiology. Right. Like, the way you think. Like, when you exercise, it boosts serotonin and other things, and you feel better. Mm-hmm. And that sets the tone for your day, for your week. When you And when you don't, you can get angry faster you can right. be in a bad mood you're gonna feel tired and it sound it seems like contradictory because you go and you work out and you feel like you got ran over by a truck for five minutes but right. then you're good like it's amazing how it like completely changes your mood and your body and you actually have more energy which right. just seems weird it does well it could be the copious amounts of coffee too. right also <laughs> and fit aid and all the other so it is interesting that i uh, and, and there's probably some science in what you just said that I really mm-hmm. haven't put down on, uh, like, I should journal it to find out for myself. Journaling always, like, if you put attention to it, it's going to get better, whatever it is. Um, or at least you're going to identify the problems and strengths. But anyway, so I always work out in the morning. I have a really, really hard time working out in the afternoons. Even I'm all over the place. <laughs> so, and that's probably good. You can see, like, what works better for you. But, I would prefer to work out in the morning. Yeah, but just I have life a job. is not you know, like I have that. a job. Yeah. Like, a, like a, I have to go, actually, to work sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we can uh, we can set up another office in here, and you just work <laughs> yeah, from here, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, three, everyone working out of the uh, gym, which... I guess it'd be good except for the banging plates uh, during... Right, r- during calls. Conference calls, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, you had mentioned nutrition. I do want to get into that. I do have other questions, too. We're probably going to go all over the map. So if you've been listening for a little bit, um, me and Tangents are best friends. <laughs> and um, I try to... I'm now making notes to remind myself to come back <laughs> to bits that I want to say or ask about. But <clears throat> you mentioned, mentioned the nutrition challenge or nutrition kickstart or whatever. So t- tell us, what is this nutrition challenge? And I know it's wrapping up today, right? Yes. Yeah. So what is it that you do for people um, in this challenge, Kickstarter, et cetera? So uh, maybe like once a year we run a challenge outside of just individual coaching that I do all the time. 
Um, but it's 28 day challenge and we're basically, it's twofold. This past challenge has been accountability and habits. Accountability meaning like teaching people to pay attention to their food, log their food, like giving them a picture of their day of like what they ate of like, wow, I ate, did not eat enough or I ate way too much to yeah. sustain like my day, giving them like a like reasonable, like based off their biometrics, like this is reasonably what you should be eating. Mm -hmm. And that way they can see and have like a vision of like, okay, I, I can get where I am at right. here. Now it's fascinating there. You said I didn't need enough. Have you found, oh, yeah, Danny, you mind shutting that door for me? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Have, is it, it, it's always fascinating to me when you tell people actually you will lose more weight if you eat a little bit more. And they're like, mm -hmm. I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah. So explain that one. A lot of people don't <clears throat> eat enough or they, it doesn't look like they like they eat like one meal, but it's junk. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough calories, but they're not even meaningful calories. That's the key there mm -hmm. is they're eating things that aren't not quality. Yeah. Right. So it, somebody once told me and I like this. I stole it, made it my own. Uh, it's OK. At every once in a while, eat entertainment, but you can't eat entertainment no. and expect to. Yeah. So drive if it has a drive through window, it's entertainment. Yes. Don't eat there. Yeah. So I cut those off my <laughs> list, except Evie always points out, you know, uh, the the Euro place down here on ninety two by mm -hmm. the the movie yeah uh, village Euro, 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 Euro village no Euro. Greek something yeah Euro I'm sorry village, I think. he listens to this podcast <laughs> he doesn't I forgot his name it's great but she's like dad it has a drive through and you eat there I'm like okay valid well, so, okay and I don't think consider like Chipotle is not too bad and they don't as have long a drive as you though. don't like. You can go crazy. Anywhere you eat, it doesn't matter where you eat. If it's a restaurant, you can go crazy. You, you go can. in the wrong direction. But you can make some good choices, too. Yeah. Well, I like the guardwells of, like, like I, for a while I did, I can't eat sugar. And that didn't last for too long. And now I say, I don't eat sugar. So words mm -hmm. are important. Yeah. And then these guardrails. So, hey, yeah. I, I will go to lunch or breakfast almost any time with anybody. Because my choices of food are very protein and vegetable based. Yeah. But if I'm at dinner, they're like, hey, I'll get a dessert, right? Right. And so dinners are harder because there's typically something sweet that you want afterwards. So it's a harder <laughs> thing for me. Or if you go to the grocery store, eat on the edges. Yes. And that's something we talked about too. Yeah. So you talked about guardrails. Like that's the other side of it was like the habit side of it and giving people habits that kind of surround food and drink and movement and everything. So one of the habits is, um, balanced meals, mm -hmm. right? Plate method, like building a balanced meal, like, making sure what you eat for each meal, what you're logging is quality, right? Like that you're getting the right balance of veggies and fruits and protein and What's some of the biggest stuff. inconsistency you see? Like, like for, for example, <clears throat> for CrossFit, a dude walks in the gym, I already know his shoulders are tight. Why? Because 99% of guys' shoulders are tight. Yeah. A lady walks into the gym, she probably wants to lose weight and the uh, intensity is a problem going long distance and like you know, 45 minutes no yeah. problem but like do this faster like I don't know right so there's some general things I can almost pull out and say 99% of the time it's true when people start talking food you're like okay I already know that you girls do not eat enough protein oh really okay actually that's a problem for everybody even is even it guys don't eat enough protein um, guys don't eat enough calories really in general okay what I have found um, and what are they eating qu quality of calories okay. too um, I had I don't know if they'll listen. If they yeah, listen. don't use names. No, I'm just not say people. Yeah, there you go. It, like I had one, a client who ate like really reasonably throughout the day. Like, because that's one of the things during the consult I talk about. Tell me what you eat breakfast, lunch, dinner. Not your most well-behaved day. Just like what you ate yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he went through it. I'm like, this all sounds good. This all sounds good. And he's like, and then I ate an entire box box of Triscuits. I'm like, okay. Right. <laughs> pause. We're, we're pause. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Um, and it's funny when you look at those labels on the back, they're always like, uh, like the serving size of this right. one thing you should eat all at one time is like right. nine. You're like, wait, there's three donuts and there's nine servings. Right. How does that work? And just gets. That's yeah. one thing we went through in the challenge as well is like how to read a nutrition label for drinks, food, anything, like what to pay attention to, yeah. what to look for. That's one of the things. So, like, when I started in my own nutrition journey, like, a few months after I started CrossFit, mm -hmm. um, we went on a grocery store tour, and, like, we talked about, um, like, look, picked up stuff, looked at labels, and it was very eye-opening um, to, to, like, see, like, oh, like, that completely changed my view of what to pick, what to look at, like, and I probably don't buy anything without turning around looking at the label. Yeah, I, I didn't know that was a thing. 
But as an engineer, I just like to look at labels to see what was in it. Yeah. I didn't know what I was really reading. Yeah. But well, and you'd be like shockingly like disappointed. Like I remember, you know, those like packs of Lance crackers. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you turn around and you actually look at it. Do you know how many crackers you're actually supposed to eat? Like no. two. Really? Yeah. And everyone eats the whole pack. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's like the serving <laughs> size. And like it's a lot just right. for two. I'm like, so you start like that was what I'm trying to teach people is like you start to realize what is quality, what's not, what is even worth eating and what's not. And, you know, you because you can eat a lot yeah. if you choose the right things and you can eat all day and feel full and happy right. and not feel like you're restricting yourself like and eat pizza and whatever as long as you're finding balance and picking like reasonable stuff. Yeah. So you'll do with people both the macro counting, so like, hey, let's balance out your meals, as well as habit-based, mm -hmm. which is more things like, hey, drink enough water. Yes. Just, yeah, know. we talk like water, movement. Right. Like trying to get like one of the habits, this challenge was everybody needs to get 30 minutes of activity outside of the gym. Okay, yeah. Just well, every day. Like, yeah. It doesn't have to be the same time. Walk 15 minutes in the morning. If you take your dog on two walks, you're getting it. Like, right. walk, park farther away. Like, we talked about all kinds of ways you take can your get. Kid like, for... take the stairs right. when you go to visit your coworker at work. Like, tiny little People things People don't go to work. You up. can't use that. <laughs> Who goes to I do. <laughs> do you have to go in the office? Twice a week, yeah. So my buddy Justin said they just made work Wednesday, so everyone's got to go in on Wednesday, and everyone's like, boo. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well... That's interesting. I wonder, I mean, these these companies have expensive, <laughs> like, sweets and stuff. Yeah, like, they yeah. let's get rid of them or use them. There's okay. a lot of people. <laughs> so, I have said this for a very long time, so correct me if I'm going wrong, or expand on it if this is, like, yes, I like this. Um, if you want to, sh well, let me back up. Everything you could ever want to know is on the internet. Oh, yeah. And now you can ask well, ChatGPT. There's a lot of stuff that's wrong. It is true. Also. So to filter that data, right? And then there's ChatGPT, so you can ask it. And it'll give you pretty much everything summarized. Yeah. So it is there. You, the information isn't the hard part. What is is applying the information or if you want to shortcut the process of trial and error and failure, hire a coach. Yeah. Get a mentor. So I have... Um, a very expensive coach I use for business mm -hmm. for not just here at the gym, but I use it for rental properties, Bitcoin, all this. I mean, it's right. basically help you become a better entrepreneur. I'm like, oh, I love it, as well as a better human. So, because as you know, I'm not very good at being human. And so I, I am working on it. But do you have a coach? I do. Yeah. I, yeah. And so, should a normal person, <laughs> if you live here in Woodstock, Georgia, and you're like, I don't know if I can do this on my own. Could they hire a coach and shortcut the process and see results? Yeah. <laughs> so, and are you that type of coach? Yeah. Yeah. So, weirdly, <laughs> if you're thinking to yourself, I've done this so many times, it doesn't really work, da, 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 da. A coach shortcuts the process. Yes. So, what's some of the things that you've been able to shortcut or give people habits or whatever? What have you seen successful in the last, I don't know, it's been like, it's been many years since you've been doing this with us. Um, in terms of, like... I don't know, just some of the some of the interesting successes. Like to you, like it's like we do this crossfitty stuff for yeah. a living. Not well, not a living, but we do it. And so I could tell somebody just simply move. And they're yeah. like, really? I was like, just show up. They're like, really? So there's some probably people, some like I mean, I've had I've had a client who their sole goal was just to drink more water. Okay. Nothing else. Totally fine. So Let's do we it. went through the gamut of different ways to attach that habit of drinking more water to their life and I think we ended up settling on at red lights because they drove a lot for work and and <laughs> it was random but I'm like hey it's working like no that is like just some of it is like and that's a great like habit that. stack yes yes we you have, have to stop at a red light it is literally yeah. the law so they would just grab got, water. like that was and that came up like we tried all kinds of stuff and and they were like, what if I drank at red lights? I'm like, do it. Let's, Let's try it. it. Yeah. Like, what, what's going to hurt? If it and sometimes work, we'll those brainstorming else. sessions yeah. are just what you need. Somebody else to expand, right? So you look at your own life and you're like, oh, I've got this problem. And then you tell someone, they're like, well, just don't go, whatever it is. You're like, oh, wow, that is such an easy <laughs> solution to my, right? Yeah. But it just takes the other person to bounce it off of. And even right then, I've shortcut the process. It yeah. might have taken me months to come up with this. But I pay you to give me advice. Yeah. And the nice part about, like, I tell people, don't get your family to be your, like, mentor or your coach because you're going to fight with them. Pay somebody because you know what they're going to do? They're going to tell you the truth because yeah. you're paying them yeah. and they want you to be successful. <laughs> well, and on that note, like, one of the things that I tell every single client during the consult is you are only going to be as successful as what you 
do, right? Like I cannot be there to knock cookies out of your hand and make all your meals and walk with you through the grocery store. Like I can give you every resource, all we can talk all day long. You can message me, like you can ask me questions, but like you actually have to consciously make decisions to choose, make better choices, plan things out, like think about it. Like just having a coach is not going to just magically melt off the no. fat or do what you want to do. And it's shocking how many people just don't listen to that and mm-hmm. they don't like ha- they have paid and not gotten anything out of it because they didn't do anything. They didn't right. try to follow the habits. And I always tell people the people who get the most out of having a coach is are the ones that are they check in. They tell me what they're struggling right. with. They actually apply what they're doing and then realize, oh, this is not that hard. Right. It's well, that's the thing. It's a two-way street. So mm-hmm. you, you, you get a coach. The coach is going to coach you, but you know what a coach isn't going to do? Parent you. Right. Because I will spank my kid into doing the right thing, but you are an adult. I am not going to spank you. Right. If I'm telling you, yeah, right? So like I can't pull your, take your box right. of Triscuits away. Like you have to make the choice to only eat right. five and, and I think put that it down. It brings it back full circle. Like you said, your daughter's one. You're sitting there thinking January 1st, 2016. I need to do some. I need yeah. to do something different. I found it yeah. inside myself that really needs to do that. So I tell people all the time when they want to come to the gym or they want to do something, it, it, it only really is going to work if you really, really want it. Yeah. So I had four kids play club soccer. The first kid, Olivia, I was like, you will juggle because I have heard from other people that juggling <laughs> is awesome. Get out there and juggle. You know what she didn't do? Juggle. She didn't juggle. She didn't care. <laughs> Evan, he didn't make it on a club team. So he's like, hmm, I've heard you say and other people say juggling is good. I will try it. Levi, who I didn't say anything to, he's like, you know what? I really want to excel in soccer. For a summer, he taught himself to juggle, and he could juggle for like 15, 20 minutes, no problem. Not just a little toe-tappy thing, but yeah. like up in your head and all over the place and like chasing it down and all that. Yeah. Phenomenal, because he wanted it, because yeah. he found a sticky Y. He's like, hmm, this club soccer, kids know what they're doing. This is pretty good. But in rec soccer, people toe ball, and parents are idiots. Yeah. So, well, and parents are idiots in general. <laughs> but, right? And so it's only when... You really want it. Mm-hmm. That's when it yeah. works. Yeah. So you if you don't really want it. want it yet, nothing. There's no and amount of money. And you can tell, like, I've, at this point, I've figured out, like, when they walk in the door and we have that consult, like, that they want it. Or they Let's don't. actually walk through that. So somebody mm-hmm. says, "I'm interested." They go to our <laughs> website. They fill out a form. They're going to get contacted. Uh, they're going to get a, a quick automated email. Hey, you're in our system. We got you. Um, usually, Jamie will reach out right then and say, "Hey, what's up? How can I help?" If they say I'm interested in nutrition, they're going to be sent over to you. What happens next? So I am like, hey, Laura, I'm interested in some nutrition uh, coaching. So we set up a consult time and kind of walk through, like, how the program works. Um, We go through, like, a nutrition history, Mm -hmm. right? It kind of, well, nutrition and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like, we talk about what is a reason for coming here? Like, what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish in six weeks of individual nutrition coaching? Like, what is, what do you want working on? Mm -hmm. And we walk through like, what do you eat? Like, what do you typically eat? And that helps me kind of pinpoint. So a discovery. Yeah. Like what kind of like, how does it work? Food fit into your day at work? Like, do you never eat lunch? Like all that kind of stuff. So we can kind of figure out. um, Who you are. Right. Like, what do you drink? Like, what do you put in your drinks? Like how often do you eat out? All kind of just run the gamut of. Have you ever had anybody who like, like, they don't drink water at all, period? Yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Fascinating. They don't like it. Um, so, like, as they're talking, I'm usually, like... I wake up with a Coke. Making, like, pinpoint, like, work on meal prep, work on, like, like yes. things that they can work on. And then we kind of, ha- like, we talk about, again, like, they're, like, okay, what do you want to reasonably accomplish in six weeks, right? Because, and I say reasonably because if you say, like, I want to lose 100 pounds, that's not going to happen in six weeks. Yeah. So, did I tell you that story? You know the story of the lady who came in and said, I want to lose uh, uh, 20 pounds, um, in, uh, like, like I, it was 20 pounds in like 20 days for a wedding. And I told her, I was like, look, I can actually help you lose 20 pounds, but it might kill you. And she's like, Hmm, I'm in. I'm like, no, 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 no. I I mean, I've wrestled. I know how to lose 20 pounds in a day and it could literally kill you. So there are, and that's the hard part with some people's goals. Like, like I want to be a bigger, uh, person muscular, but I also want endurance. I'm like, you know, those don't always go together. Crossfitness, crossfit 
fitness across broad modal domains and uh, modal domains and times. It'll get you there, but yeah. you're going to be the person who people are like, "Hey, would you help me move because you last forever?" Or let's go up Steel Mountain, and you're like, "Yes, let's do that." <laughs> you may not be the person who's like like totally jacked ripped. I mean, CrossFit doesn't necessarily do that for you. Yeah. But if you have smart goals, we can walk you through that. Unless yeah. you have goals that are like, "I'm going to the games." You're like, "Yes, yeah. not really us." So, what is a goal that you're definitely in addition to, uh, like? I'm gonna lose 100 pounds in a week. You're like, okay, that's not really for me. What's a goal that you're like, I, I can't, that's not a reasonable goal. Let me shut this door. You talk, um, I'm gonna shut this door. I, I mean, most of the time, it definitely has to do with wanting to lose a tremendous amount of weight in uh, a short amount of time. I've had people ask, like, what can I eat to make my arms smaller? Like, it doesn't oh, that's fascinating. Work. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've never heard that oh, one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, or, like, yeah, like wanting to pinpoint sp- certain spots of your body. I'm like, that's not how food works. Like, yeah. if you eat an apple, it doesn't go to your butt. Like, right. It- <laughs> that would be, if it did, that would be. Right. I usually tell people it, go, it comes off the way it went on. So if you yes. saw your, initially your thighs were getting bigger, and then it went to your stomach, and then your arms, well, it's going to come off arms, right? Yeah. So I think the most common one I get from people is, how do I lose the muffin top? And for yeah. a while, I'm like, I don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> I, imagine I'm a Georgia Tech engineer a guy who doesn't have much exposure to women. How about that? <laughs> Tell me what the hell is a muffin top? And so I, like, I'm like, uh, uh, honey, what is a muffin She's like, Andy, you're an idiot. I'm like, I know that. But, so yeah. So, um, so like we go through this history and it also helps me gauge how much do they understand about nutrition. Like some people walk in and they already know everything about macros and they're just good to go and they're oh, like, like that. Yeah. they just want to pinpoint certain things or, or dial in certain things and they want their numbers and they like, or, and you know, in addition to that, maybe they want to build some good habits. And some people have like, what's a calorie? Like mm-hmm. they don't know nothing. Like they don't <laughs> understand the difference between a vegetable and pro- protein. Like, oh, wow. so like it helps me kind of figure out like, where do we need to start? Yeah. Like, do we need to start from like absolute basics or do we need, can we dive right in or right. somewhere in between? It just. And so, so typically you're working in about a six week program. Mm-hmm. And one of the things, a motto that we have up there, in addition to, we're happy, humble, helpful people who want to be healthy and fit now is in our 90s. So we want smart things over time. One of the things we like to say is uh, we want to help you become the hero of your own story. So, hey, let us teach you and coach you and then go and do. Mm-hmm. But they could also say, hey, will you be my person forever? Sure. Yeah. I mean, you can yeah. walk with them as long as you want, but we want to equip them. So yes. what's something that is like, okay, I- I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't know, an average Woodstock person. Actually, it could be anybody. And they're, they're needing some help. What is a normal piece of equipping that you tell people that like, hey, this is solid advice no matter who you are? Um, in terms of nutrition? Yeah, nutrition. For sure. <laughs> if a Above anything else, like if you if you're not interested in like logging and dialing in and that sort of stuff, um, plate method. Yeah. Okay. And what, real quick, what is the plate easy. method? So the plate method is like imagine you have like a divided kids plate. Obviously you don't, oh, yeah. but like pretend you do. Or like you go to the picnic and they've got right. those three things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like okay. a picnic plate. Half of it should be full fruits and veggies, mostly veggies. Right. Mm-hmm. A quarter of it should be protein. A quarter of it should be like starchy carb. Yeah. If you follow that, even if you have to think outside the box a little bit, yeah. you follow that at every meal, every snack, you can see a lot of progress. Like that alone is like above all, like if you follow that, you will see progress because you will be eating like balanced for every meal and snack. I like that. So would you recommend somebody uh, like buy a piece of Tupperware and just bring it with them or just keep a picture no. in their head? <laughs> That's the hard part is like you have to think outside the box a little bit. Like it may, you know, yes, you can buy a divided plate, but mostly just like you just have to consciously think like, okay, if I'm at a cookout, let me serve in my choices. All right, there's some salad over here. I'm going to put that on my plate first, fill it up halfway, and then add the other parts. Or if you're at a restaurant, you have to think like, okay, I'm going to get a burger, but I'm not going to get the bun. Yeah. And then I'll get a side salad and like I'll have you know, or half the bun or something right. like think about the components and what they're made of and build How to your put it together. Yeah. So I have found a trick for me is, uh, become boring, which isn't hard for me, but mm-hmm. is, uh, eat the same things all the time. Yeah. Then I don't have this decision fatigue and like I'll pretty much always get a, uh, Hamburger full garden, no bun. Yeah. Add an extra but piece of cheese. But you get what you want on the burger, right? Like I've taught people that too. Like, compromise right yep. like get that burger you want with the bacon or whatever and the bun 
but get a salad or green beans or something on the side. Like balance right. it out. Like you can still eat reasonably. Eat some fun. Yeah. With add a little bit of fun to what you're eating because you'll be bored. I, right. But like be reasonable about uh, like compromise on every like the other stuff. Right. Yeah. So I would never recommend for people to do what I do, which is I don't eat sugar and bread <laughs> because. It's too hardcore and yeah. stupid, and really, there's no real reason to do what I'm doing. I just, <laughs> I, I, I know who I am, and I can't go halfway. When people were like, we do paleo 80% of the time, I'm like, so you have cheat meals on the weekends or something? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, I can't do that. Because my cheat meal would be, I just ate the entire tub of ice cream. <laughs> I'm cheating. You know, I would yeah. blow the entire thing. Yeah. yeah, so my personality. That's actually, like, that's a good point, though. That's something that I've taught people is, like, if you have, like, a meal where you decide to make less than desirable choices. I try, I try not to call it cheat meals, right. like just less than desirable choices. I like choices. that. This, I, I'm going to steal that one. Yes. Fine. Like, that's life. Like, good. Like, enjoy your, enjoy life. Like, yeah. have that meal. But don't then decide after that one meal, I'm just going to, well, I've already messed it up. I'm going <laughs> to blow out the weekend. I'm going to blow out the month. Blow out. Because realistically, right. if you just got right back to your plan the next meal and kept going, not it's not going to show up on the scale. It's a blip on the radar. Right. Like that's, but that's a trap a lot of people fall into is they, you know, have one sip of a margarita and they're like, eh, I'm going to just do whatever I want to for the rest of this month. And <laughs> right. then they lost all their progress and, and everything. Yeah. So would you, or, or expand on this one, <clears throat> I, if I lost 30 pounds in 30 days versus... I was able to lose one pound every month for five years. Which one's better? And depends on the body composition. Oh, good point. Okay. That's actually like yeah, when you talk about even... victories. Like yeah. a lot of people um, have had good successes. Like the, their scale has not changed, mm -hmm. but they have lost inches and they have their clothes fit better and they are happier. Like I would prefer that victory over like a drastic scale victory yeah. because that's really all you really want. The scale number does not actually matter. No. And it's you know, just sometimes gravity. it's unreasonable. Yes, <laughs> but it just depends on your body composition and your height and your you know everything. Like, but I would rather you be have your confidence built and boosted that your clothes fit better and you're happy and you can move better because you've lost some inches, even if the scale only went down like two pounds. Right. Well, that's a funny one too. I, and I knew better to ask that question. I should have prefaced it better because. Uh, if you want to lose weight, just like go to the moon and get on a scale. The gravity is different. So it's not <laughs> yeah. gravity, yeah. but everyone focuses on the scale. It's actually like the BMI, yeah. uh, uh, body mass index, or like muscle weighs more. Yes. So when they, people walk in. People get frustrated and they're yes. like, it's going up. I'm like, but, but. but your body fat is going down. We're building that muscle that's burning fat. Right. Like, that's so if you're care, like, don't obsess over the scale. Right. Like, let's, you, you have two inches off your waist. Like. That's okay. awesome. Right. Like, yeah. that's what you want. So that's a better, yeah. Okay, so let me rephrase that one. Uh, <clears throat> I guess I have seen people do uh, super calorie deficient oh, diets. Yeah, we've had a few walk in with that. Yes. Yeah. And then, like, yes, there are dramatic results, but then with They're hungry. Yes, and in, like, two <laughs> months later, they weigh more than they did yeah. before. Yeah. Versus if you lose, like, or... Your, your fitness and dialing in, your, your trajectory is essentially, hey, I'm like losing one pound a month or fixing one degree a mm -hmm. month over five years. That's not fixing like root problem. That's just, you're just starving yourself for like, Yeah, the other one while. is starving yourself. The yeah. other one is, the second one is root problems. Yeah. Well, at red lights, I eat candy bars. Well, how about <laughs> we drink water instead? Right. <laughs> Um, okay, so if somebody wants to find you, uh, we go to CrossFitGarage.com. We got all the information in there. They can also um, email any of us. Use our first yep. name at CrossFitGarage.com, and it'll get to us. Um, you've been doing this for a long time. Your journey has been impressive. What you're doing in the gym, I really wish I had like thought about YouTube and things and been like, look, here is Laura now. <laughs> and then like years later, because it's fascinating to to see the two bookends. Not that you book in the other side yet, yeah. but. Um, when when I see you, I just see Laura. Right. And I don't well, notice. Well, there's so many people at the gym who have no idea, like who, that where you I came started from. Started. I didn't know you were at two thirty or something. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. um, a road to come back from. Yeah. And I think, for me, I like to hire coaches that have been there before. Mm -hmm. So it's not. 
you know, like I hired a guy to help me get into Bitcoin because he understood Bitcoin and Lightning Network. Right. Not that he was just like, I don't know really what I'm doing either. He actually did it himself, right? Yeah. So I'm in a entrepreneur's mentoring group with people who are entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. So they have gone before you. So you have the experience, not just, what do they call it? Empathy versus sympathy, right? Yeah. You've been in their shoes. Well, because like, what does a nutrition coach supposed to look like, right? Because <clears throat> it doesn't, it depends on what, side of the spectrum you're on like if you are already kind of fit and you're just looking to dial in stuff and you walk up to a coach that isn't like completely ripped how are you going to know like and trust their advice because you are expecting them to look a certain way right but then at the same time if you are really early in your journey and you have a lot of weight to lose and you walk in and, and you see someone who's like completely ripped are you going to feel nervous and like, right like so I mean, I kind of, I and mean, we've talked about before, like putting my story out there. It's like, because it, it, I don't know that everyone knows that I came from that unless Jamie goes around and shows a picture where she loves to do. Does <laughs> I'm she? Like, Please delete that. Don't picture. put that on there. I love that. I know. I, I get it that, like, hey, I didn't it's like awful. that about me. Yeah. But to see where you have come yeah. and you've done it correctly over time. It's not like. No, it's not. You didn't want well, I mean, like, I didn't gain all that over time. It was over, like, I don't know, five or six years. So right. it took, you know, it takes time to get it off. It's not people, I, no, like, that's a problem too, is people, they have a lot, a big goal. And realistically, six weeks is not going to get to you to your goal. It's going to take time. Right. And they but you're get, going you to know, equip it's, them. It, you're going to have weeks where the scale tips up and you're going to have weeks where it goes back down. And it, it's about consistency over time to get you where you want to go and staying there. And right. there's no magic pill. There's no magic like you eat this for three weeks and then you're going to Actually, I think there's a magic like pill a now. million dollars. There's something that people are taking that like makes body fat like. It's an injection. I've oh, okay. heard about that, which yeah. I'm like, that's... I'm a little suspect, a little, but I mean, hey, if that's what you want to do... That, that seems weird, yeah. but okay. No, I, <clears throat> yes. So I think you said that the, it, it's... People are it's, impatient for the results, right? Yes. They want it and they want it now. And they don't realize that this is like a long-term lifestyle change that you have to work hard for. I mean, I still have to work hard for it. Yeah, well, me too. I'm yeah. here every, well, maybe not every day, but I ain't here a it's lot. It's not the easy choice. The easy no. choice is going through McDonald's every morning. Or, or you really, know, is that the easy choice? Because the you have to choose your heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, I went yeah. through uh, McDonald's and bought some entertainment to eat, but I'm going to pay for that yeah, later on. And, and should like you compound that too many times, mm -hmm. you're going to yield the result that yeah. is inevitable. Go back to a circle. <laughs> yes. And you're going to, so everyone is going to die. I would like to limit the choices of death to the things that I want to die from, right? So the top things to die from right now are like heart disease yeah. and uh, um, I think it's some sort of cancery thing. So things that are somewhat preventable, yeah. like don't eat stupid stuff and like live or, or, or treat your body well. Mm -hmm. I think the next one is kinetic impact. So that one's a little harder because people text while driving. So I think that like consumes a lot. Right. But even the one after that is uh, uh, complications to that. I don't know if I can say it without them deleting me off of here. So <laughs> there was a thing that happened for a while that shut everybody down. Mm -hmm. There's still complications to that. But weirdly, healthy and fit people had no problems with that. Yeah. So again, weirdly, just invest in your health and fitness. Right. And you can make dramatic yeah. increases. Okay. Well, so, you have to make time for you. That's something yeah. a lot of uh, women that have come through have struggled with. Yes. Like Because they're you know, the main focus is on their kids and on their family and stuff. And I'm like, but you can't take care of them unless you take care of you. Yes. You need to carve out, like put it on your schedule, make your time for me. I still struggle. Like that is something I have to do on my work calendar. Like I'm working out this time, this time, this time. And I block it off because otherwise I, I could let everything else and consume my time in my life and I'll never get here yeah. and never get to take care of me. Do you, so I, I now use a, a, Google um, Calendar, yeah, and oh, yeah. I block everything. Yeah. And my yeah. kids are like, "You're an it's idiot." It's like a color coded is... Tetris. Yes, yes? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> is that like wrong that we love that? And I'm like, uh, I literally. Block I don't know in. that I love it, but like, it's helpful oh, for man. sure. Yeah, you block it out. Like, no more multitasking. I do one thing for about an hour. Yeah. And then if it, you know, doesn't take me an hour, I shrink it down to 30 minutes. So I did it in 15. I shrink it down again, and I like to stack it all. So then I get back to my office. I sit down. Like, I just. Oh man, but I, I do that. Yeah. I own the gym yeah. and I still put in when I'm going to work yeah. out. Yeah. And you sometimes- You have to, or uh, everything else in life, like adulting will capitalize right. on it. And it's not, cause it's not gonna just happen. Right. You know, like you have to, again, make 
like conscious choices with your food, you have to make conscious choices with your body to move and make yeah. time for movement. So if you are, are so I, well, let me back up. I have too many tangents in my head. It is so hard. <laughs> I even wrote things down I never got to. Um, <clears throat> it's a word that I had never put together, two words, mom guilt. Oh yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's fascinating, mom guilt. I have seriously big dad guilt. So until my kids reached an age where they're like, I don't really want to hang out with you anymore, dad. Mm -hmm. Then my dad guilt went away. I'm like, well, yeah. Well, here's your number one. No, that's the other finger. But uh, <clears throat> so actually right now the kids are all back from college. Summer is on and they're like, Olivia said, Dad, I want to go to a rodeo. I'd like to do some line dancing and this and that. I'm like, line dancing? I am in. So now the whole McCann family-ish goes line dancing on I've Mondays or Tuesdays. That. Yeah, it's great. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but I bought some cowboy boots and a big buckle. I'm like, <laughs> so I, you know, I am creating intentional moments with the kids. Yeah. But it's on the schedule. <laughs> Yeah. And there's scheduled time for me. Um, so yes, schedule your stuff. Don't have mom guilt. Don't have dad guilt. If you don't do something for yourself now, you'll end up being a burden on your kids. So yeah. like Cam and his mom, like Andy, I don't want my kids to struggle with me when I get older. I need to do something yeah. now to prevent well, that. Well, and it's a sanity thing too as an adult. Like, oh, yeah. If I don't get to come, like two days this week, I didn't get to come between work and soccer. And... I joked when I came in yesterday, I was like, what is CrossFit? I don't know. I haven't done it for so long, but, uh, like I missed that time for me, like realistically as a, like an adult with a full-time job and busy life, like that coming here is my only like hour. And realistically half the time, it's like my only outlet for getting out all my frustrations from the day and adulting and life. Right. But like, I hold on to that, like, and I make it happen as many times as I can reasonably. Yeah. Some days I'm like, oh, it's just not going to work today. Like, right, right. I, I have to take that to the bed or whatever happens. But, like, it's it's important that you, like, make that time. And, yes, sometimes I do feel mom guilt because there's been times where I come and I could have spent that time with her. But I also remind myself, like, if I don't come and if I skip a lot of times coming for that reason – I won't be able to do continue to do this, like right. helping, like being able to do everything that I do. Your sticky why that you right. came up with in your head, right. January and realistically, 2016. I'm like, she can run with me. She can, I'll, we'll make up something yeah. like we'll do something together. Well, it is fascinating. So I, I guess being um, a lot older than you, cause you're 25 and I'm 50 and <laughs> I have four kids that are like, like 42. No, but uh, to see them having watched us all here, not just me, but everybody. Mm -hmm, but she's and, been coming here since she was like two. Yeah. Yeah. And so one day they're going to be like, hey, I'm going to go get my level one. You're like, what? Mm -hmm. And they're like trying to learn and to coach to and be involved. she wants to do CrossFit Kids. Yeah. Like she wants to do it. I yeah. love that. And so they're learning a better habit than, you know, you know, whatever well, I just it is. want her to re like, and what I feel like I've at least hopefully accomplished is it's normal. Yes. Because there was a period in my life, like when I was married, where everybody kind of felt looked at me like, "Why are you trying to work out?" I'm like, that's a, isn't that the normal thing? Yeah. Like, why am I having to be made feel guilty because I want to take care of myself? Yeah, that is so like, strange. And so I, that's, well, I don't think that was the sticky why, but yeah. like I stick to it, and I want to impart to her that like that is normal. It mm -hmm. is normal to take care of your body and to you know, lift weights and to do things to take care of yourself and to eat healthy. And, and that's just a normal, like that is the status quo. It's not the status quo to just do whatever you like. McDonald's to every day. Right. Whatever. Right. So I think it is also, you brought oh, up. I've convinced her that McDonald's is made out of plastic. But. That's right. So, yeah. So a long, long, long time ago, uh, Eric Richards put up in his health sprout, um, a McDonald's hamburger and fries and let it sit on yeah. her shelf. Oh, I told her about that. And she's convinced that it, like every McDonald's she's had is still in her stomach. It probably right could now. be. Yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't seen that thing be done, so it, the hamburger and fries were out there and all they did is shrivel up yeah. and even the it fungus didn't want to eat it. So it's you're so like, gross. if mold won't eat it, then it, it's an even like, it's not real. I don't it's know not if it's, it's not real. It's entertainment. So you brought up an interesting one too, which is I get to come in here and see people that I enjoy, which is fascinating to me that when we started doing CrossFit back in 2007 and the guys were like, let's do a gym and I'm like, sure, whatever, this sounds interesting. It was really just to have gear that was correct because I was swinging a half filled fertilizer bag as my kettlebell. <laughs> That's just, I mean, I didn't, I'm, where, where do you buy a kettlebell? I don't even know. This is yeah. 2007. So <clears throat> we did the gym, got this gear 
And then all of a sudden started finding people that were interested in this. I'm like, interesting, the community is almost becoming more important. Not maybe more oh, important, yeah. but as important. Oh, for sure. And then yeah. when you dial in, hey, we are happy, humble, helpful people, you start to find people that you're like, interesting. This place has people in here that I enjoy and I want to be around. So I think it's very important. So when people ask like, hey, what kind of gym or where should I go, where should I join? Close is always good. Close builds easy habits. And if that's going to get you to go, great. Just get started. CrossFit, whatever. It's going to be about the same no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. I would say, though, that more important is going to be find a gym that has a similar feel to who you either right. are or want to be. Right. So there are some gyms that are like, we are very competitive. We're putting people into the, well, not really the games. They get to go to the open, which, which we all do or whatever. So <laughs> nobody's really going to go to the games unless no. you're doing this full time. But... That could be that their type of gym. Or, hey, we're super young in, like, we're all, like, 25 or younger, and um, we go out to, 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 you know, drinking and smoking every Friday, whatever. Yeah. Like, okay, that could be, find the people. Ask them, hey, yeah. who is your typical member? What do you guys typically do? What do you typically like? Because if you can find people that you engage with, yeah. You can be oh, like, that's your reason. And that's like, it becomes your reason for coming, right? Yeah. Like you get to see your, you know, like you build friendships and your little gym family and like, which is weird. Cause lifetime, you're not going to do that. If no. somebody's talking to you at lifetime, like, you're like creeper. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's cold in there and there's mirrors. Like it's weird. Like when you, after you like experience it after <laughs> CrossFit, you're like, this is so weird that you people do this. But, but it's, it's not fun. Like it's, it's a, it, I think that first six months that I was here, that was a big reason for coming. Cause I met people and we kept each other accountable for coming mm -hmm. and I enjoyed the coaches and we had fun and it was actually fun to come. Actually, that's something that I didn't even get into. So you were a member for a long time. Then all of a sudden you're like, I'm like into a, coaching. So how did that, how did you come here. into that, uh, um, installment of, uh, of a well, direction of your life? I think originally my original motivation was I was um, getting divorced and I didn't have a job and I didn't know if I would be able to afford CrossFit and I just really wanted to keep coming. That was yeah. my original motive. Well, hey, so sometimes you need a sticky wire. That is it. <laughs> that I want to keep going. That for getting level How one. Do but I do then that? as I continued to do it, I really enjoyed it. And yeah. then I expanded into like the co the nutrition coaching and everything. But yeah. I think my original sticky Y was I don't have a job and I'm I don't know how I'm going to be able to keep paying for yeah. this, but I'd be damned if I'm going to quit. Yeah, like, there you go. I love I'm going to do it. Well, and it's interesting. So one thing that we we kind of like uh, it, it, a non-negotiable for us is fun, fitness for coaching. So you must be fun, and you are fun. Mm -hmm. If people have fun and they smile, they will come back. Right. And if they're coming back, they're going to get fit. Mm -hmm. And if they're getting fit, they're going to trust you and let you coach them. Yeah. So fun, right? You got to have fun. You got to yeah. want to be there. So. Yeah. Um, you know, that's fascinating. Well, if it's not fun, they're not going to show up. And no. that's the first step one, show up. You, uh, it, right? <laughs> and even in the eating, yeah. show up. Yeah, or show investing, up. Mm -hmm. show up. And that means, like, do the thing you're supposed to do. Even if it's playing pickleball, which is now Tuesday night, CJ. I found a Tuesday night one. So but it's supposed, to, it's supposed to be mixed doubles, so I would have to wear the skirt. So I don't know how that's going to... Yeah, I don't know how that's going to work, but... Um, I'm keep. I'm looking... One day we're going to... I, I got some friends to be able to play too, probably. So. All right. So we're doing fun things like pickleball. CJ's <laughs> into it, and he's not 50. No. I don't know. He's like 22. I don't know how old he is. All you people look super... All you people. That sounds really weird. <laughs> Everybody looks super young. There is a point in your life when you're like... Like, the basketball players in college look like babies. And then all of a sudden, the NBA oh, players yeah. are like, well, you the look like babies, too. at my work right now look like they could be high schoolers. Yeah. And you're like, I don't... <laughs> So the kids are all the time. We go to like canyons in downtown Woodstock and I get my uh, hamburger with lettuce wrapped. Mm -hmm. up, you know, I know what I'm getting. And they're like, dad, how old do you think she is? I'm like, uh, 12. And they're like, <laughs> she's probably like 25. I'm like, dude, there's a, I just can't. No. I don't know what's there, wrong with me. I, no, like I, in the last few years, like I don't know where it happened, but I'm like stopped being able to gauge how old people were. Yeah. Totally. And even then, like we went to, uh, Evie and I went to uh, swing dancing at the Brimstone Tavern, which does the, also the line dancing. Mm -hmm. So we went to the swing dancing and uh, she's like, um, I think you're the youngest one here. <laughs> I'm like, actually, you're the youngest one here. But she was right. I was probably the youngest by like 10 years. I'm like, fascinating. What all? But they all look normal to me. Right. <laughs> they look the right age. Okay. Anyway, anyway so I got some standardish questions I'm going to throw out there to you. Um, we probably covered a bunch of these anyway. Uh, so what was your first job? 
um, outside of like babysitting. Anything. I don't know. What was your first job? Uh, I was a cashier at Publix. Ooh, I was a cashier at Big Star. You ever remember what Big no. Star? Yeah, that was a Georgia <laughs> thing. What, what did you learn at being a cashier at Publix? Um, hey, Shanna, you can talk to us. Probably just dealing like with uh, trying to figure out how to give like difficult people like just to la- navigate because you know there's always a, a Karen or oh, yeah. like somebody who's it's sad like, that that became a thing because I have friends named Karen I know I know, I know they hate it but I know. like um, so it's very descriptive <laughs> it is I didn't know that was a thing until people were I'm like who are all these people named Karen how did that become such <laughs> they're a they're not actually I know but I just like it, it came up and I was yeah. like where did I get off the bus I didn't miss everything but yeah, yeah everything um so be able to kind of navigating customer service. Yeah. Everyone know? should do a little bit of customer service. Yeah. Yeah. I learned quickly that uh, I don't want to do this for my job. I better stay in school. And then I was like, what makes the most money? All right, STEM stuff. I'm going to aim towards because I was like, cashier at Publix is not. I <laughs> no. Need, I need yeah, more. Yeah, I didn't want to do it. Yeah, I need more. I like would, disip- you know, they used to wear the little bow ties and oh, I would conveniently yeah. leave mine at home I every time. Did you, do you, did you, uh, were you in the era of cashier when it was basically either <laughs> cash or check that they had yeah. to use? Yeah. And. No, there were some cards too. Was there? Yeah. So we had to do that thing where you were like, you take a check and you go, you go back and oh, forth. No. And it like, well, I had to like, like feed it in the machine it? and it would like, oh, yeah, yeah. They got validated fancy on that. or whatever. Yeah. I, and people are like, you just... I always have some panic with because people would never, like, if they gave you, instead of giving you like a 10 and you give them back your change, they give you like a 10 and some other random change <laughs> that wasn't what it was asking for. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to in my head really fast. Yes. <laughs> I always panic. It's pulling out the coins like I don't know. Here, just take some. Just take and some just coins. And they just be looking at me like, "Can't like, you do this? Like, right. Why don't you give just me give back me yeah. this much?" Like, okay. So I learned that in Georgia at the time, you could not sell alcohol on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody told me that, and okay. I'm a cashier. Well, and so and it was always always like you had to ID everyone. Oh yeah. Regardless, because it asked you to punch in the birthday, oh. and people like would get so angry, and they're like, "I am of age." I'm like, "I have to type in your birthday. Like, right. I don't actually care how old you yeah. are. I just let me type." Everybody it in. is January first. It is 1st. not to like yeah. inconvenience you. That's just a requirement, or you can't buy it. So people figured out when I was there on Sundays to come to my line. Because, because you didn't know. And I would ring it up and they would come <laughs> oh, up with. Oh, it wouldn't even let me. Oh, yeah. I would go beep and it would come up with 11111. I'm like, I don't know what. Why does this always do that? <laughs> and then I would do manual override and I'm like, I don't know how much this is. And they're like, uh, like 250. I'm like, <laughs> right. I have like being a 16 year old, I didn't buy yeah. beer. So I'm like, sure, 250 for a case of beer. And they're like, this is great. So people would line up in my line until the manager's like, you know, you can't sell alcohol on Sunday. I'm like, uh, no. Why didn't somebody just tell me that? <laughs> what do you think the code's for? I'm like, I have no idea. Why didn't someone tell me the code? Was, I was just yeah. thought it was breaking. I'm like, there's a line. Let me get them through there. So, yeah, I illegally sold alcohol for Big Star <laughs> on Sundays. For a while. For, a, <laughs> for about maybe a month. <laughs> oh, <laughs> People Lord. figured out. Go to that kid. He's an idiot. Yeah. Um, so we did the fitness journey. So actually, here's something interesting. What has something that... Uh, uh, both either CrossFit and or nutrition allowed you to get back in your life or to be able to do. Say that again. Like something interesting, like, hey, I've been, like, for me, I'd say, hey, you do pull-ups really well. That's something awesome. But what's something that you're like, hey, this journey has allowed me to do oh. or get back? Um, I remember thinking, I mean, there's been a lot of, like, skill wins over the years. But when I first started, I could not even run when we were doing 400s around the building without stopping. Oh, really? And, like, a mile seemed absolutely insurmountable to me for, yeah. like, the longest time and then until I could. Yeah, yeah. and then we have Murph coming up, which is yeah. two miles. Uh, I still don't, like, <laughs> don't enjoy running. But, <laughs> like, I'm not worried about that part, Yeah, um, actually. So, gaining back the confidence in your ability to do things, yeah. like, hey, I need yeah. to go out for a jog. Or doing a handstand yeah. push-up or all this stuff. Handstand push-up. So, that's incredible because many people Jim are, like... to check in with me. You... What? I got to his biometrics. Give me, like, five minutes? Perfect. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yes, so you get back those skills and those abilities. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything that you're like, hey, this is something in the future that I'm going to use my fitness for? Pickleball, walking the Appalachian Trail, coaching your daughter uh... in soccer? <laughs> no, don't ever do that. Don't coach I mean, your kids. I probably would, like, I approach, like, if I go hiking or something, like, like it's a piece of cake. Yeah. You know, um, but I'm not, like, I'm not... 
I've never considered myself athletic, like sports, like group sport or team sports. Interesting. I'm terrible at like throwing and catching things. Terrible. I, I get, I'm well aware I get made fun of every time we play cornhole and stuff. So, <laughs> but I don't know, like, I don't know that it like meshes together exactly, but like, I don't ever worry about picking up stuff around the house or moving furniture or yeah. any of that stuff. Like, like mulch, like I got to spread mulch this weekend. I'm like, I got that. I've done, you know, I remember doing that pre CrossFit and being like, I'm going to be miserable for the next three days. Yeah. And like, I don't worry about that stuff. Anymore. Yeah. That's awesome. So, uh, um, Kelly Teresi said she just came back because she was trying to pick up a bag of mulch. She's like, I can't. She's like, what's wrong with me? I'm going back to CrossFit. So mulch <laughs> yeah, is yeah. like, I should have. Or like <laughs> trying to plant stuff and your back hurts for three days. Like I don't, it doesn't happen right. anymore. And I'm like, that's a good reason. That is good. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of good reasons. There is a lot of good reasons, but I think it's a uh, fitness for the sake of fitness. Isn't really that awesome. Fitness for, Hey, I want to be longevity is great. Yeah. Or fitness for, I have specific things that I just want to like do life. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. be sat on the sidelines. Right. Um, what? No, let's do this. Um, if there's a billboard out here that we used to have our CrossFit Garage sign up on, mm-hmm. if you had that billboard and people in 92 are driving by, what message would you give to them? Oh, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be health and fitness. Like, I would probably put San Dimas High School football rules, and nobody would really get that, but it would be funny to me. Be nice. Oh, I like that. You're not the first people person to say not, that one. People are not nice anymore. I mean, yeah, you come across some people, but a lot of people are just selfish and, yeah. like, motivated by only, like, what they want and, like, they... They'll be rude, having no idea like how what kind of a day you're, you've had or what you're dealing with personally. They just they just only motivated by themselves, and not everybody is like kind or nice enough anymore. Right, everyone's got a backstory, yeah, just, and the backstory may have just right. happened a minute like, ago. Like, don't Smile. be rude to a cashier because or a waitress because they messed something up. What if they're like just their cat died or something? Right. Like, you don't know. Just be kind for happy, know. humble, helpful. Right, like you don't need to be rude right and caring. being kind costs nothing just <laughs> yeah. yeah smile yeah I, right. i'm totally with you and i love that one are there any books or podcasts that you would recommend out or that you uh, uh listen to no because i know you don't have time books and- no when I, I drive read a book i'm trying to fall asleep <laughs> okay yeah that'll put you down yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that's actually true it, like knocks me out yeah I can't read. My dyslexia kicks in and I read the same page like 14 times. <laughs> right. Yeah. While like if even like Audible and stuff, I, five minutes in, I'm thinking about grocery list for oh, next really? week or like I can't like, it no. takes a lot for me to like stay focused on, on that sort of stuff. What about when driving? No. <sighs> oh, especially when driving. Oh, you just zones out? But yeah. what's weird is I do better when we have meetings at work and I just have to listen. Like I get up and like walk around. Oh. Like, if I just sit there, then I'm daydreaming or doing other things or yeah. getting, like, distracted. So I turn my podcast and books up to times two speed, <laughs> and it keeps me, like, super engaged. Of course, when my wife gets in the car, she's like, no, turn it <laughs> off. I'm like, sorry. Nobody else likes it, but I'm like, yeah, bring it. Talk to me quickly. <laughs> right. Um, okay, so any parting words for somebody out there who is struggling uh, that, well, I guess, hey, Come talk to Laura. She will help you. But if they're on their own, anything that you would tell them, uh, these are easy things you can do right now to help your health and fitness. Um, just be, like, making a conscious decision. Like, thinking about it every time you go to make a meal, buy a meal, anything. Like, what is a better choice that I can make? Like, just that alone Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people just, Meh, that's what I want. Like, they had paid no attention to, like, what they're actually putting in themselves. Interesting. So having just, like, a mindset of maybe I should make a better choice, that alone can help help, help a lot. Yeah. But, and that's one of the hardest things, like, for her, first hurdle for people to get over is I have to stop and actually think, like, when I'm at Starbucks, what's a better choice, like, above the caramel frappa whatever with yeah. lots of things on it the teenagers drink and i'm always jealous like how do you do that every day um but like what's you know just stopping to think about it yeah that alone can go a long way yeah that's good or that's at least a good place to start like yeah. just thinking about it yeah i like that so be wise be conscious yeah be involved in your own choices right i think i would tell people um you're not alone yeah. And oh, the, yeah. The hardest part is just starting. Right. And it's but, like it's hard. Yeah. There's not a magic pill or or one little thing you can do. No. It's a lot of little things that add up to. And actually, things. that's better. Mm-hmm. You want to adjust 
a lot of things 1%. Yeah. If you do one thing 100%, it is really hard. I would and, also say don't don't bite off more than you can chew too yeah. fast. Right? Unintended. Like, right. Oh, yeah. Like, don't, don't, like, like, and that's something in the nutrition consults. I'm like, we're going to do this one step at a time or right. like one or two steps at a time because if I throw all of this at you, you're like, Ooh, I'm not going to, like, you're just not going to do it. Yeah. So, you know, making that, those little choices and being mindful, but also, like, taking baby steps, like... And the baby steps aren't, they're not like, oh, you're so weak. No, that's no, to get like, you successes. It, right. If like, if you're, you start with waking up mm-hmm. and you drink a glass of water right when you get up and you do that every day and then it becomes a habit and you're used to it, like that's how yeah. it works. And then you incorporate something else. Like right. it's not like you cannot expect to completely change your life trajectory with fitness and nutrition, like in one day. Right. Take your time. Right. Be slow. Be steady. Be smart. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. All right, guys. If you are looking for coaching, mentoring, and accountability, Coach Lara is here for you. You can find us easily at CrossroadGarage.com. She will work with you whether you're here in Woodstock, Georgia, or if you want to work remotely. Yeah. That is totally fine. So if you're in, I know there's weirdly there are some people in Australia listening. So if you <laughs> like the southern accents, come on down. She will help you out. All right, guys. You be good. See you on the next time. <laughs>